So here we are entering the pink city and you can see that by the walls. So welcome to another crazy day in Jaipur where we're going to be exploring the pink city and some of the attractions around here. You all pink city, the first gate, Jaipur. 8 kilometer pink city, 8 gate. 8 gates, eh? Yeah. Okay. Wow. Oh, look how close the scooter is to you. <laughs> I can play touches with the person next to me. <laughs> uh, everyone's trying to get into the pink city. You can see all the buildings here are pink. I'll explain to you later why the buildings here are these colors. Even on this side, everything is just pink. They call it the pink city and it doesn't really look pink. It more looks like a, a washed orange towards pinkish color. But I mean, this is it, the pink city of Jaipur. So we're heading to a place within the pink city called Jantar Mantar, which is an astronomical observatory here within the pink city and was built by a king in the early 1700s. Tiger Ford. Uh, okay, Ford that side, hey? Yeah, Tiger Ford. I think our rickshaw driver is giving us half a tour of the city at the same time while we're in here. Tiger Ford. Oh, Tiger, wow! I can't see. Look at that there. There's a fourth update. Okay. Thank you so Thank much, you so much. Eh? Yes, Thank you, my man. Wow. That was a little bit of a chaotic start to this video. That was. <laughs> I can't get over how busy and crazy this place is. Yeah, now we've got to cross the streets towards Chanter Manter. <laughs> this is a guy that just came and said hello to us. <laughs> People are quite friendly here in India. <laughs> what is your name? Drew. Lovely to meet you. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank nice, Ruth, thank you. <laughs> so, here we have some tickets. It seems to be 200 for Jantar Mantar for a foreign tourist. Hi, how are you? I'm good. Uh, two tickets for Jantar Mantar. 400. 400, hey? There you go. Thank you so much. Where can I get a guide? Yeah, guide inside separate. Is guide inside separate, hey? Thank you so much. Hi. Thank you so much, hey? And we've entered Jantar Mantar. Oh wow, look at that. How cool are these buildings? Gee whiz. And to think these actually tell you time and the planet's position. I think of the planet's position, but I wouldn't even know the first thing of looking at these buildings. So I think we're going to look for a guide to explain what is happening here. Hi, are you a guide? Guides. Are you guys all guides? How much do you charge for a... Uh, the minimum 400 we charge for guides. 400 charge per guide? Yeah. Okay. Okay, okay. Mr. RK is your this guide. Way. So what's your name? My name is RK Mina. RK Mina. Ah, RK Mina? Yeah. Nice to meet you, Daniel. Yeah, we're from... And this is Leanne. Oh. Lovely to meet you. Uh, we're from South Africa. Oh, South Africa with our congolation you win the Women's World Cup in the semi-final. For the cricket, eh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. we're the best. Yeah. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning. So, <laughs> so this place is a local name, Jantar Mantar. So Janta like instrument and Manta like calculation formula. Okay. So this is for instrument and that's what we are explaining the formula. So why it's called Janta Manta. So over here in this area, just to give you guys an explanation, there's a lot of like sandals that the king of uh, Jaipur 300 years ago created because he was an astronomer. So all these sandals around here, you can see one, two, three, four, five, six. All these ones were created in order to tell time. 300 years ago it is crazy so we have a guide with us that is actually going to explain to us how some of these sundials work so we calculate of the time help of this sundial but first calculate jaipur local time jaipur local time yeah because local time all over india different places in different but okay. present time we calculate all over india is one time zone okay. so we called iest time indian stretchable time so iest time we calculate Allahabad. Because Allahabad is geographical center point of India. Okay. So today is the difference between Allahabad and Jaipur is 40 minutes, 4 zero. So we first calculate the local time plus 40 okay. after we get IST time. Uh, IST time. Yeah, okay. Indian standard time. So it's Jaipur time plus 40 minutes equals IST time. time. Yes. Okay, okay. So right now, early in the morning sunrise is start of the west. Yes. So start of the morning, 6 morning in Hindi. 7, 8, 9, 10. Now it's for 11 here. Now 11 return of the Hindi, 11 o'clock here. Is that 11 o'clock? This is 5, 11, 5, 11, 10, 15, 20, 21. So it should be 11, 21, 21 now, eh? Hey? Plus 40. 12, 01. Uh, okay, because this is a Jaipur time, yeah. which is 40 minutes before. So this sundial that he was just explaining, you can see that the shadow is busy sitting there. 
So once it actually hits 12 o'clock Jaipur time, is it going to be in the middle? And then once it hits the afternoon, then this shade will start appearing on this side and telling the time along these two little areas, which is super fascinating. This part is the northern hemisphere, other part of the southern hemisphere. 22nd okay. of March, 23rd of September, sun is northern hemisphere. Yes. And 24th of September, 21st of March, sun is southern hemisphere. But right now, sun is southern hemisphere. So yes. this part is not working. Oh, so this one doesn't work? Yeah, this working after 22nd of March. Oh, so the northern hemisphere yeah, was that part, side? southern hemisphere, this part. Oh, okay. The sun is positioned here yeah. now to actually face this instrument and that's why it can tell the time. But when it's the opposite season, the sun is in a different position. So that is why that's positioned that side. Yeah, because there's a complete shadow on that side. And over here you can actually see a little shadow. A little shadow being casted there. And then again, once he has the numbers of the time in order to tell what time it is. This is for 11 o'clock. It's just 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. 11, 25 local time plus 40. So I think it's for 12 o'clock and 5 minutes again in the standard time. 12 minutes and 5 o'clock, that's correct. All these little dials that has been created by the king 300 years ago is all created in Jaipur time. So all of them read 40 minutes before the time that we know today. And that's why with all the clocks and the times that we're busy seeing today, we've got to add like 40 minutes to it. So King Swaijai Singh must have been such a clever man in order to actually come up with all of these instruments because wow, there's so much maths and complications that go into this. I mean, to even get the angle of the sundial just had to be on point. And apparently he's got five of these astronomical parts like all over India. And this was the last one that was completed and the one that is most accurate. So that is showing that it's Pisces, Yeah, eh? this is written in the Hindi in black letters in the Pisces. Oh, okay. So right now, child born today, not for Japan, not for India, all over what will be Pisces. Oh, okay, all over. Yes, that's interesting. So yeah, they have this little middle thing that has got like a little circle so you can see the shadow cast it on there and then this line here is the equator so eventually that is pointing to what zodiac sign it is and apparently it's busy showing what signs are showing Pisces oh Pisces sign so obviously in different years that will shift in areas and it's got like a zigzag pattern there and it'll tell you whether it's Cancer Capricorn Pisces Man, that is so clever for 300 years ago. Okay. Oh, interesting. I'm learning a lot about astronomy today. I thought I'd be using a compass or something like that, but we're literally just using the sun and its shadows. It's really like amazing how this was figured out so many years ago. And I think it's like a lost art. Definitely. It's like reading the stars and navigation by the stars. It's a yeah. lost art today. We've lost all of that uh, technology and yeah. bar technology, I guess. <laughs> A lot of these things I can't even fathom and it's the year 2023. It's just crazy that somebody knew this 300 years ago. The sundial. Oh, this is a big the one, eh? The biggest sun clock in the world. The biggest, biggest sun, sun clock, clock in, in the world. world. Wow. wow. So that one accuracy 20 seconds, this one accuracy 2 seconds. 2 seconds? Yeah. So that other one says how many? 20 seconds is smaller, this is for 2 seconds. Oh, so that one changes every 20 seconds and yeah. this one changes every 2 seconds. Yeah. 41 yeah. plus 40. So this is 1221. Yep, 1221. <laughs> That's <laughs> the largest sundial, the entry Guinness Book of World Record. Check how huge this is. This is crazy. And if I go to the other side, you're going to have the same shape because most of them are designed in this way. So you clearly figured out a way in order to do it. And here's the other half. It's just incredibly big. Do you imagine carrying this thing on your arm? No, I'd rather carry this on my arm. <laughs> this is less complicated. Okay. Arkamina, thank you so much. Thank eh? you, sir, really appreciate your knowledge. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> thank, thank, you. You. thank you, thank you. I would highly suggest getting a guide when coming here because if I had to just look at this, I wouldn't know what I'm looking at. But it's so much more interesting knowing what is actually happening. So we'll leave our guide's name and number here at the bottom for you to contact should you come. Oh my gosh. I think we're in the middle of the road. Cross, go my man, go, 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 go. Oh gosh, <laughs> let's just cross quickly. <laughs> the reason the city is painted pink is because the king of the time in 1876 decided to paint the city pink because pink is the color of friendship and hospitality. And at that time, he was preparing for the visit of the British Queen Victoria and he wanted to welcome her. So he painted the city pink. And by law, the residents of the city now have to keep the city pink. There's just pink everywhere. 
Can I show you here? Look here. That is pink. That is orange. <laughs> it's the orange city, not the pink city. <laughs> it's more of a peachy color to me. So maybe it's a little bit between orange and pink. Let us know in the comments below if you agree if it's orange or pink. I'd also like to formally apologize if we are shouting right now. But we have just come through the loudest streets I have ever walked through in my life. I think I'm deaf. <laughs> that I'm actually partially deaf, yes. <laughs> India is as loud as what they say it is. So you're walking through this peach city <laughs> in order to go to a palace that is here within the city as the royals stay here. The royals of Jaipur. That would be cool to see. I've never mm. actually stepped inside ooh, a palace before. I almost tripped there. <laughs> Watch your footing. No, I've never too, but apparently within this part that we're going to be seeing, you can actually walk to the very top of this facade or the palace facade that we're about to go and look at. So we've just turned off a street here within the pink city and apparently called the Bapu Bazaar. I don't know what we're going to find over here, but we'll see what we can find as we walk our way towards palace. Oh, there's so many snacks. Everyone is just selling snacks. And check out the size of these snacks. There's so many different flavors, even big biscuits, smaller biscuits. I think as we walk down the street. Oh, sorry, man. <laughs> We're going to find more and more places that just have snacks. Do you think we can try some of this? I'm sure we can. I don't know what it is, though. Hi, how are you? Yes, can I please try some? What is it? Indian snack. Indian snack? Is this an Indian snack? What's it called? Uh, this is fry. Fry? Yeah. It's called fry? Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool, let's give it a try. Looks like it's got some peanuts in it. Mmm, that's nice. Yo. It's got like... Ooh, that's noisy. It's got like a little bit of a spiciness but a sweetness to it. And it's very crunchy. It's almost like eating chips. Mmm. Good. Really good. Mmm. That is so nice. Mm. It's not even like massively crunchy. It almost just like melts in your mouth. But it's sweet. And they have so many different ones. Oh wow, thank you, eh? Thank you. <laughs> that definitely got a nutty taste, eh? That but it's, definitely. That's it's just sweet. very nice. Mm. Mm. Whoa. I think you kind of got to be careful where you're walking, yeah? Because there are so many bikes. <laughs> Hey man. Whoa. It's just bikes everywhere. <laughs> I really think some places like this, they should only allow you to walk and not bring your bike. You can see once you walk off the main streets, the buildings are no longer pink. I think you're allowed to paint them whatever color you want to here. Yeah? But on the main streets, which is down there, and all the way down there, you have to paint them pink or peach. It's cooking something here, right on the side of the road. It's just inserted there. Hi, how are you? What name, what's this one? Guji. Wow. I would like to give it a try, but to be honest, it does not smell good there. <laughs> so, I think I'm just going to pass because I want my stomach to be fine. We are leaving Jaipur in two days, and I'd hate to be having a disaster while traveling to our next city. Ooh. Oh, it really stinks here. Wow. Oh, I think we have walked down one of the wrong alleys. <laughs> that stinks so bad. Wow. Welcome to Jaipur. I almost thought I would throw up there. <laughs> wow. Holy smokes, we have a cow. It's just a cow in the middle of the road. <laughs> it's just weird to spot them. You always see them in the most random places. Indian it's an Indian cow, cow hey? <laughs> he can speak Hindi? Yes. <laughs> In South Africa, the cows are not on the road. They generally like on the farm fields. When you're riding on the road, you see the cow on the side, right in the fields. But over here, you literally see them in the most random places. You live is from? Sorry? You live is from? No, I don't live on a farm, no. No farm. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have no farm. I know, my name is Sorab. Is your name Sorab? My name's Daniel. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. So you're right here by the palace. 
But in order to get a good view of it, we need to cross the road so that we can actually see it. Okay, quickly, quickly. Oh, this is crazy. Wow, that is beautiful. So we have finally made it to the Hawa Mahal, which is right behind me. And it's also known as the Palace of Winds. Now you would think this would actually be a residential palace, but it wasn't. It was rather a space for the royal ladies to sit and enjoy the progressions of the city without being seen. But if you have a look at it, it's not actually a building, it's more of a facade. And also, it's in the shape of a peacock crown of the Hindu god Lord Krishna. Now you can actually see that there's no front entrance of this building. So we're gonna have to walk around to the back to go and actually get inside and see what it looks like inside of the Palace of Wind. Yeah, they say you can actually walk right to the top. So that's the goal. Walk to the top of this thing to see what it looks like on the inside and behind this facade. Uh, so we paid 200 rupiah per person in order to get in here. Hi, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Oh, that water does not look too kosher. <laughs> but it's a big fountain. You can see here, all of the walls are yellow, but in the front it was pink. Now that is part of the pink city, but it's not actually pink from being painted. It's actually the stone that they used to make the facade. But how do you think we get up? I don't know, I think if people are walking there, so I think we get up there, and then we gotta walk that way. Okay. There are so many guides around here, but we don't wanna take a guide this time, as our mission is to only walk to the top. Ooh. Oh, there's no stairs. This is just a ramp. So I thought there would have been stairs to the top, but everywhere there was ramps. From the research that I have done, I believe that the ramps are there because the ladies that were, or the royal ladies should I say, they were in these heavy shrees that they used to wear and they used to weigh so much that they couldn't actually walk. So they were actually pushed around this palace. Are you serious? I'm serious. Well, that's from the research that I've done. Is that um, why there's ramps everywhere? That is why there's ramps because they actually had to be pushed everywhere and couldn't actually walk because of how heavy their garments were. Yo, how royal do you have to be <laughs> that you're going to get pushed around because your garments are too heavy? That sounds fancy. <laughs> Let's go have a look if we can actually look at one of the windows. Yeah, you can see the pink of the facade and this is one of the balconies with the windows that you could actually look out to on the street. So royal women used to stand here. And you can actually peek below and see everything that's happening but still have some privacy. It's like I'm spying on the people below. It's actually not a bad view to be honest. Usually when you're in places watching stuff, there's always people in front of you that stand up and you can never see. But in a place like this, you always have an open view. Not too bad. Can I see you? Hi. <laughs> Alright, let's go see if we can climb to the top. So this is inside the facade. When we're standing outside, you can actually see these colorful windows. And now we're behind it. There's more ramps. More ramps to the top. Can't believe ladies used to be pushed up these things. Cool. They have small little windows here. Just so you can actually see. You can see the higher we get, the longer the queues become. Oh my gosh, now we're in a queue. I think everyone's just waiting to get to the top to see the view. Oh goodness, now it looks like there's actually stairs to reach the top. So it seems like the woman that went to go climb to the top actually had to walk this part and maybe got brought here by someone and then this last part they had to walk. Are we at the top? I think so. I think we've reached the top level. Oh wow, check the views from here. Wow. You can see the whole city of Jaipur from here. Oh, it's pretty high, hey? It is very high. It's actually a nice view, I can see everything. I feel like this is the tallest building for quite some time. Yeah. Like, there's no other taller buildings around us. We're just looking down on everything below. You can see the fort, there's a fort up there, there's another fort there. There's another fort there. And there's even more forts towards this side as well. 
So Jaipur really had a massive presence here of royalties and kings. And that's why there's so many beautiful places here and why this is actually a palace. It's a magical city here in India. But I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you do, then give it a like, subscribe and be sure to follow us on the rest of our Indian adventures. We're going to be making our way all the way down south to Kerala. Yeah. So stay tuned.